Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. A uh, social system based on collective yes, ownership, okay? No. That's what communism oh. is. That's no, communism from is the something French very specific. Communism, okay, we're not doing this. I am, I am, I'm, right, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm about, not doing to, get, I'm about doing to get this. all authoritarian I'm, I'm on your ass day. I'm okay, conceding. I'm not doing this. There's a, I'm there, there's a new decree. We, are, we, we will never again devolve into Dave's definition. Very rants. smart. Not happening anymore. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 143rd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So, that means you, Myanmar. <laughs> A little late to the table there, Dave. Uh, but yeah, Formerly Burma. <laughs> thank you for the history lesson, Andre. So yeah, we're back. That's Andre, right. Dave. I'm Jeremy. Just in case any Miami's government officials may be listening. Just, you can't use this. Turn it off. <laughs> anyway, we are, we, we are back. We're all here. And this week, I think uh, we're actually going to do the episode that we were planning on doing last week, but then I got into rant mode because of the things that had happened to me with dealing with my bank. And uh, for those who, who who were wondering about what happened after that, uh, I, I'm going to post a link in the show notes to the Lulberts, ep ep Lulberts episode that came out the day after we recorded that because it went even crazier. And then I got to rant on Jim show about that whole thing because um, it, it got even worse. Um, but we're not going to go into that now because we'll get bogged down. Um, but I'll, I'll post a link. So anybody who wants to follow up on what happened uh, on, my, on my journey through the uh, banking system, uh, you can uh, check that episode out. Anyway, uh, the episode we had planned on doing last week, and I do apologize to our new listener. Uh, I believe her name is Melissa. I've turned off my Facebook now at this point, so I can't say it anymore. Uh, but she had actually written to us a couple of weeks ago uh, as a new a new listener. She had just found our podcast through Kyle Turnblazer's co uh, podcast, The Liberty Forge. Uh, Kyle, we, we've had on the show before, and both Andre and I have been on his show. And, uh, you, twice, actually, I think you've been on Kyle show right on uh, yes yes yeah. I have yeah well I think I think you were the first Matter two time you might have been the first two-time guest um it was either you hey, or, either, either you or Merrick I don't remember but uh e either way I was, probably, like, well, was probably I, I, Merrick I'm not that cool well no I remember when it happened it was <laughs> one of the two of you I'm like wait a minute you got him on twice I haven't even been on once man what the fuck I thought we were friends like we actually hung out in real life and shit man this ain't cool <laughs> Um, but anyway, she uh, she found us. Uh, apparently, she's been a, a listener to Kyle's show for a while, and she found us through you know him talking to us, you know through him talking to Andre and Turnblazer. I. Turnblazer. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. He's a good, good dude. old Kyle Turnblazer. Kyle, he is a good dude. Kyle is awesome, and as I've said before, as I announced him when I had him on my other show, Abolitionist Abstractions, uh, the way I announced him was the man with with the coolest intro in the podcasting world because he really does have the coolest intro in the world. Uh, Jerry, the, Jer, Jerry James, uh, the radio guy from Alaska did an amazing job on that. So yeah, anyway, so this, this woman, she, uh, she found us through there through, through Kyle's podcast and she reached out and she, you know, she listened to the first couple of episodes after she found us 
and was curious about thing about you know what it was that people like her could do because the way she put it in the email and I'm going to paraphrase here so I do apologize I'm not I'm not like purposely screwing up your words <laughs> um, but it was you know she she wasn't new to the ideas of liberty and self governance but basically she really didn't know that there was more of us out there type of thing you know because you know the way she said it shoot at the end you know with with multiple qu uh, question marks was you know i can't be the only one out here who thinks these things right <laughs> who wants to like raise my kids and <laughs> teach them about these things it's like no no you are most definitely not alone so i did try to answer her through the email uh you know through the messaging on, on the facebook page but i did want to give it a little more treatment than the you know couple of minutes i was able to quickly <laughs> type some stuff out for her uh which you know wasn't obviously a lot because i'm a horrible typer so a couple of minutes wasn't very much information <laughs> but you know she was basically looking as somebody who's not necessarily new to the ideas but new to recognizing that there's more of us out there and that there's actually things that could possibly be done to really obtain freedom now instead of just sitting at home by yourself and you know or with your kids and thinking about them and go oh wouldn't this be nice if you know you know her, she was looking for what you know somebody like her could do in the line of you know activism uh, and also, obviously, like m many other people coming to these ideas, you know, other possible resources, you know, books, maybe other podcasts, uh, stuff, stuff I was, like that. Uh, festivals. Reading a story. Go ahead. I was reading a story the other day, just just a side note about a, a guy who's like, man, what can I do? Right. So he formed a local group called um, Citizens for Constitutional Government. Right. And all they did was go down and make sure all the books are all the laws on their city's books were, uh, you know, legally and constitutionally allowable. This guy's already got like 987 laws off of his city's books. <laughs> That's impressive. Good for so, him. That is. Uh, so, it was some absurd number like that. That's pretty crazy. I, I, I don't think I know that particular, that particular story. I have heard ones like it before and you know, I, I mean, we've we've discussed this on the show in the past that, you know, political activism, although I have I, I've said recently, I've kind of rolled back my position on I was very a hard line against it at all. Uh, for, I, I for was very time. hard line until I looked at the, um, the the mayor, the city model, not 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 going past that. Yeah, I know but we've we've discussed that on a what changed your mind? Well, I my I, I think it's more along that it was my overall attitude towards things where I have tried to, as I've mentioned before, I, I've tried to stray away from absolutism pretty much at all. <laughs> I, I've reached that. I finally, you know, I, I, I got over the hill. I, I'm now 41 and I, I've reached that point. Well, you my, have to have your lines in the sand, but you can't be a retard. You well, know? no, no, no. What, yeah, but what I'm saying is I, I reached that point. I honestly think I finally reached that point in my life where I, I reached the, what, you know, it's that Socrates quote, you know, the, the you know, the, what is it about how you recognize knowledge is first, right, you know, first admitting you know nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. I, fi I finally reached that point because I was like, you know, I, I can't possibly know any of this stuff. And I wanted to start over again as, in, in some ways and, and just kind of re reinvestigate ideas that I had just kind of thrown by the wayside. So I've kind of been giving everything a second look again. And when it comes to the political activism, I still don't think I'm ever, at least right now, I don't think I will ever, ever again engage in it in any way. Uh, but you know, I can't yeah, say, I, don't, I, don't I can't say never myself I, in anything past a city level. It's like, like I was trying to say, like, I, I don't see any reason in it. Like you have to shill out too, and you have to compromise too much. Um, and, and the money is going to be the, the thing that changes everything at the, everything past the city level. I mean, much of the, what I just said goes for the city as well, but it's so much more visceral and, and see, you know, it's, it's visible. It's not. Oh, it happens in Washington or what you know, it's or down at the county or whatever. It's, it's right there in your city. Yeah. But I guess it also depends on where, you know, where you are too. Cause unfortunately not every city has its own government. You know, I'm one of those cities who doesn't, <laughs> we don't have our Lame. own yeah. excuse we, for a city. We don't have our own, you know, we're considered a town or whatever. Cause you know, we, and we have a decent amount of people, but we don't have, you know, we, we don't even have our own government. The, there's a town government that controls, I don't know how many, 10, maybe 12 
different little townships or whatever within in the in the town the town of Hempstead and I think there's four towns or you know I think they're actually officially called townships but everybody refers to them as the town I think there's four of them in the county of Nassau and they each encompass you know 10 12 maybe 15 little towns or little you know hamlets or towns within them and stuff some of those luckily you're getting out of that shithole uh, yeah <laughs> but but again so it depends on where you are because some of those places do actually have their own little their own little town governments which Oh, of you course. do have a you do have a better chance of affecting change if you want to go that route. Now, like I said, I've kind of walked my position back where I'm not openly attacking people for doing so anymore. I used to be so against it that I would kind of denounce anybody who used those methods. I you know I, I think it all I've depends, right? Stance. If you're aggressively voting, you're you're voting for more taxation. You're voting for for the state to take more action in the marketplace, then yeah, I'm going to chastise you. I'm going to ostracize you. I'm going to want you not around me. Well, but see, if you're voting completely out of defense, you're voting to lessen the state, you're voting to reduce the, any kind of state power. Uh, like I, I have to applaud that. Like that's as a libertarian, anything that is more, uh, you know, protective of private property even if it is you know just a little or one you know one lashing less or whatever um it's still a step in the right direction you know you have to put the pragmatic boots on every so often well yeah i mean i've i've said many times before i think i even said this in, in last night's show that i did it's not I, i'm not you know i'm not insane enough that if something quote unquote positive do, does happen i'm not going to freak out and go oh i do not accept this because it's a government decision and oh hell no i'm not going to pay less taxes just because like i'm not that you know obviously i will take the you know the quote unquote positive result and be like all right cool you know rock on but for me it's still the one thing the one hurdle I, I still can't get over because what you just said there dave i do i do agree with partially but you know I don't see how a vote for any politician at any level, unless maybe you're voting for yourself and that's the only way you could be assured of what you're actually going to try to do. But outside of voting for yourself for that, <laughs> that particular political office, I don't see how any vote for any politician could possibly be considered defensive because of just what actually happens. I mean, you could just look at the history. doesn't matter what the rhetoric was or how earnest the person was about what they want to do. Once they get into that office, there is a game that they well, have to play. Even Ron Paul had to play it to a certain extent i know? agree but also there are guys that get in and go full-blown military dictator and change everything i mean just look for instance at trump i'm not saying he's a military dictator but out of his stated platform uh you know to get elected he's he's done like 78 percent of it he's already like it's already done <laughs> so most people just haven't uh, felt the effects of what has happened. Most people have at all. He hasn't. He, he, he hasn't done. He hasn't done seventy eight percent of anything, man. Um, he's talked a lot. Nothing's actually been put into action. Even the tax plan that people are going. Oh, look, he lowered my taxes. Did anybody actually read it I, and see what ha see what happens ten years from now? Because I, it's a I mean, plan that actually ends up increasing. It only took it only took the taxes off for a little bit to make everybody go yay. Nobody else paid attention to the fact that oh, they come back and more by the by by a, by the end of a decade. Once I think it was conveniently, the, the main thing was ending conveniently, the Obamacare once, conveniently, healthcare mandate. Once, but he but he that still hasn't been done yet either. <laughs> No, there's, that, there's no wall. There's no sustained. wall like he promised. That's never going to happen. He was, you know, he was Mister. He was Mister. You know, I know I, I, the Second Amendment. What was the quote? I just saw it again the other day. The the, the quote, one quote he had about the Second Amendment about being, you know, with, it ended with a, you know, him saying something and then period. You know, that's it. There's no question. Well, yeah. Once he gets in, it, it's it all changes. It's it's going to be the same. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, get that I don't one. Was get, that one's the biggest? But but that's again, been the biggest red flag. But. But the but the, the tax uh, thing is bullshit like too. I said, because man, I I still look look at all the other taxes that got raised. I'm talking about look. look <laughs> so I'm talking about just on Occam's razor here. Like all right, everything that let he Andre ran on to, to we've, we've get elected. Let, we've, we've talked had, a lot. Let Andre have. He has to say. he has accomplished uh, seventy something percent of it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Provable. The only thing I was planning on saying yeah. was we're kind of getting off topic. So let's. Uh, I, I'd you, like Andre. to direct the conversation so, yeah. back to the questions that were being asked. So. So yeah, you're right. So 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 politi so politically, you know, like I said, up, up on that level, because because of what we're just talking about, I I think Dave and I were already in agreement anyway. It's, there's no point, 
You know, my my original point to yeah. this was I think it's always it's never a defensive move. Like people claimed voting for Trump was a defensive move against Hillary, but you know what? Again, look what actually happens. Well, I mean, um, voting in your that's just state the way it for goes. the mayor to pass a, a legislation that decriminalizes some well, no, that's, malum prohibitum well, law is a net positive well, no, no, that's, for you and your safety. Well, I, you, I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, which is why I said originally so, I think voting for politicians, I have a hard time finding any actual examples of it actually being a defensive move. Now, voting on specific bills or resolutions or you know or whatever like the the people actually have a chance to or what do they call them a ballot measures um like yeah, voting on voting on those specific things that's the one thing that i've said all along that i even even when i was hardcore against political action of any kind that i said that's the one argument for a defensive vote that i can see being made like that one i would usually concede and say okay like i I can understand how that's a def like that's a pure defensive vote. You're trying to get in there to stop something like from more money being taken from you or more freedom being taken or whatever it is. Like okay, as far as a defensive measure, I can see that. My one issue though that I keep coming back to unfortunately is because and this actually will tie into what we're, you know, the, the question that we're trying to answer here is what can people you know, not just not like just this uh, this woman who wrote to us, but anybody. What can any of us do? Um, the best thing I still think that any of us can do is somehow try to convince other people <laughs> to look at the ideas that we're talking about and take us seriously, instead of just blowing us off and dismissing us because that's what they've been trained to do by the media, by the indoctrination process, by everything. You're just crazy tinfoil hat type people. We can't even utopians. We don't even have to. We don't even have to discuss your ideas. You're what, right. They well, won't even. They won't even consider the. <laughs> Wait, yeah. are we not wearing tinfoil anymore? Well, you know, it's, it, it depends. It depends on the day, man. It, sometimes it clashes with my <laughs> outfit. Why doesn't anybody tell me these I, fucking? Things? <laughs> I, I still I, think. I, I'm that, sorry. I thought you saw the memo, but hold on, hold on. What I was gonna, what I'm trying to get at is that I think that, you know, what what anybody can do, like we're looking at this, like. You could take these actions, or you could convince other people, or you could do what you know, like the type of thing Dave described that that one guy did. You know, gather up a group and actually try to try to affect change that way. The only the big problem I have with that that I keep coming back to is, unfortunately, the one byproduct of doing so is you've gathered. Uh, you know, assuming that you've gathered enough people to be able to swing the vote your way or whatever, or, you know, what we would consider the right way type of thing in order to lessen the uh, the tyranny of government. Most of those people do not think like you. So these are the type of people that you would want to convince of the ideas of liberty and freedom. But unfortunately, by gathering them all together and having a quote unquote win in the political sphere, what you've actually accomplished Aside from getting whatever you know, whatever you wanted done, done, you've also convinced all these people who need to be convinced that government is completely unnecessary, that government actually works, and they can use it to their advantage. I I don't I don't agree with that. I I really? don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree I, I really with that don't. either. I don't. Really? Well, and let me explain I, why. And let me explain why. Let me explain why. Go ahead, Andre. It's okay. So it's one thing to say, you know, because I, I've always made the argument that like voting for politicians doesn't actually. Um, have any net effect or net net positive effect generally because politicians are not beholden to you. There's no clause or restriction or you know criminal penalty if they don't fulfill their promises. They can just lie out their teeth, and as long as they don't actually break the law, which they are also capable of changing if they have enough momentum to do so, um, they really don't have any incentive whatsoever, except maybe just a plain flat out bad greed to do anything that you want them to do. However, as far as referendums go, I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with collective action. There's nothing wrong with a bunch of people coming together and saying, okay, so we're all, you know, we're all living together in the same space. What say we all take, you know, take a vote and see if we want to do things this way. All of us here, nobody else, just us here, the ones that are actually going to be affected by this. I, there's nothing there's nothing morally or ethically wrong about that no there's uh, I, I didn't say there was I, th I think well no but but that's but that's the point but that's the point I'm getting to so referendums uh by themselves 
while yes, they can they can affect change, I don't think that's necessarily an endorsement of the political system. I realize that some people may view it that way, but I mean, realistically, the, I, I don't I don't see that being an endorsement of the political system, right? Because it's fundamentally two different things, right? It's not representative government. It's not even democracy necessarily, because if you don't agree, if you if you don't vote for it, you don't vote for it, right? It fails. Okay. Yeah. I, I I do think that you're looking at it through a through a particular lens that you know I would agree with, but I don't think most people look at things that through the same lens that you and I would do, which is why I I think that more people. I mean, I maybe I am wrong. That I don't may know. be my handicap. That that may very well be my. I, handicap. I don't know. I, I that's I mean I'm 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 open for discussion on this. Obviously, I, 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 I don't really know. I, I think <laughs> just based on I mean, and again, maybe it's my bias coming through that I'm not seeing it either because I know when I was in say like when I was in with the Libertarian Party uh, before I became an anarchist or when I was in. With with the tea party, you know, just all like all the people I dealt with and met. And, and here we're talking about, yes, I know in New York, but these aren't the crazy New York city liberals that most people think of. These are the, these are the or people are out they? along, these are the people out on Long Island who actually at least mouth the words about limited government and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, at, at the, at the end, they're conservatives and whatnot, but they, still believe in the constitution and they still believe that on some level all of these people still believe in the necess in, in the necessity of government whether they agree with who's in there or not or whether well, they see, agree with it largely I, or not i i don't believe in the necessity of the state but i believe the necessity of government okay you get what i'm it. saying we, here? We, did, we did that semantical battle a couple of weeks ago let's not do that when again well it's for very the, important no to, for this because no, every time this, it oh, is, okay, well, okay set, no, no 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 wait wait before this goes any further let me just set this aside whether whether or not we're discussing one thing or the other the vast majority of people that you're going to talk to are not going to understand the difference either yes, a they're simply not going to comprehend it uh, which has been the case. Some people just simply are unable it's to grasp. It's been conflated for concepts. a reason. Or B, they don't want to. So I, I, as much as I appreciate this conversation, because I've had it plenty of times before, and there is a lot to dig into here, uh, this is kind of a moot point for the conversation we're having right now. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily going to be constructive to answering the questions that yeah. are being asked about the most effective way to well, go I about think pay, pursuing activism. Well, I think people want to base. Well, let's let, let's agree. Yeah, okay. Can we let's, just agree we for, the, for the purpose of this conversation? Can we? Because we've used the word government multiple times already. For the for the purpose of this conversation, Dave, can we agree to use the word government moving forward just to make it easier? As Andre's asking, because sure, I think he's I think sure. he's absolutely it, right about this. And that's actually really, I wasn't even thinking along that line, but that's a great point. That yeah, this will go over a lot of people's heads. So, but just most people believe in the necessity of this thing. Okay. So, and these are the mm -hmm. same people that we're trying to reach or whether, whether we're actually trying to get out there and reach them with, you know, cause some people like to proselytize and do all that type of stuff. And again, I've walked, walked my stance back on a lot of things and, and, and not being as hardcore against them anymore. I still won't engage in them. It's not really my deal anymore. I don't want to do that. My whole thing is that I prefer to the, the lead by example pro approach and Andre and I were talking a little bit this, about this before the show, you know, I would, you know, as far as what, like I would encourage, if I'm going to encourage anybody to do anything, which I really don't try not to encourage anybody to do anything in this regard, but you know, if you want to do it, go for it. Uh, try to focus on your own individual freedom and that of your family. And if you want to include a couple of other, you know, friends or families or group, you know, and create your own little group and do it that way, whatever, you know, like that's fine too. Like that's actually what I'm going to be doing at some point in the near future, hopefully. But, you know, focus on that type of stuff. And, and then, ultimately, I think yeah. that's going to be, that's going to be the best way to work out. Like what Dave was talking about, uh, forming your own, like, you know, township, right? Or get, get a few, get some people together that you trust and basically create your own town, your own community. Uh, I think that would be phenomenal There's to do and I, just, I would love to I would love to push for more areas. people to do that yeah and then it becomes uh, but even but even but even without doing that even just like in day-to-day -day life um forming you know networks of support where you guys you know actively try to avoid being entangled by the state or by government or however you want to call it um being entangled in it and being forced to to deal with it um, and reducing that intrusion into your lives, I think, is is a really valid way of 
of pushing what we're talking about and actually providing practical experience that other people can then take and apply to their own lives. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that actually that that actually leads right into because uh, the one of the other things she had asked was about you know possible resources and I don't remember if I, I put this in the email response but you know right along those lines actually uh, a good resource for that is uh, our, our friend Shane Radliff who we've had on the show before who does the Vanu yes the Vanu Shane podcast. Shane is fantastic about that. What what I mean his his other podcast Liberty Under Attack they did an amazing series for a, lo a really long series the whole th the direct uh, direct action series where you know they tore apart pretty much, you know, I think they went through like a hundred different things of like political and non-political actions you could and couldn't do. And they, and they, and they actually tested them out and figured out what was actually worth it and what, act, you know, what was just a waste of your time and that type of thing, you know? So that's an amazing resource if you want, if you actually want to get out and do things like that. Um, but the new podcast that he does, the Vanu podcast, it's all, you know, the, 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 the tagline is it's Vanu, this, the search for personal freedom because that's what the whole idea of Vanu originally was written this you know this this idea put put forth by this guy who went by the pseudonym of uh, Rayo back in the late late 60s I believe yeah late 60s uh, actually before uh, Konkin came around with agorism and there's there's been some disputes since then about you know people well one of my uh, well one of my favorite people to pick on uh, Jane Neal Schumann uh, gets really mad about it because he claimed you know when he heard about this stuff he tried to claim that they ripped it off from Konkin and him and it's like dude he was doing this 10 years before Konkin even put his book out. You're insane. <laughs> no, nah, bro. It was all Konkin, bro. It was all Konkin. So, but I yeah, but, but they, 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 they're doing an amazing job of showing people, you know, number one, getting these ideas that had kind of been buried for a long time. I mean, they took it upon themselves to digitize all the content they were able to. They've been scour. They've literally been yes, scouring. Yes, the they have. Content. I was supposed to help them with it, and then I never ended up. Oh, that's that. right. You dropped the ball on that. So, but that's OK. Our, our yeah, yeah, another friend yeah. of the show, Jason Booth, picked up the slack enough. He did a lot of it and ended up becoming a co-host over there. Um, but they talk about a lot of this stuff and about how, you know, you could do it by yourself. You could do it if you just have a partner like Shane, for instance. Shane's going to try to start doing this himself. He's He's going to do the van nomadism, no, nomadism, nomadism thing. Sorry, within the next year, I think his plan is to, to actually be fully engaged in that. And you know, or you. Well, can, if he doesn't come by and see me, I'm going to be hurt. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Ho he can, ho hopefully, he can always park one. that van here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but so there, but they, you know, it's you, you, you could take it from that or you could try to build a community around that and have people that help each other, at, you know, whether it's helping each other just get through the normal process of life or through emergencies or working together, you know, division of labor type stuff, whatever it is, you know, all those type of things. It, those, I mean, obviously you do have to be careful of where you are and you always have to worry about the government trying to intrude on you on these type of things but it does seem to have much more of an impact than trying to go the political route because that just seems to break people's hearts more often than not so <laughs> yeah it's really depressing like what happened to ron paul basically killed it for me after after ron paul i couldn't i just i, I didn't have it in me i was like this is fucking pointless so yeah i uh, i you know yeah, like I was saying, you're going to have to compromise so much that like, what are you actually going to get through that's going to change it from the inside? Well, or either that most, or you don't compromise at all and then they just shaft you anyway because they can. Yeah. Because why well, not? Because we, we pull the levers, so fuck you. Here's the biggest issue with democracies and representative governments and whatnot is the media, everyone, the government, all of them, they all push this top-down view of things. The president, Congress, blah, 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 blah. The people that enact and put in these laws and stop you from doing the thing that Congress is implementing are your city officials, okay? The minute you take those away from them, it costs them way too much to implement those things at a federal level with federal offices. So most people don't understand the, the whole situation of grid control, and that's what we are under, and that the only str strength of grid control is this bottom layer, the city governments and town governments. Well, so... Uh Without those, uh, without those enforcement wings, they can't afford to enforce them. Their laws. 
I will say this, living in the United States, we do have the advantage where there is a dichotomy between the states and the United States. So there's already a sort of push-pull kind of feeling in mm-hmm. various places that you'll go to, especially down here in Alabama. Like it, 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 We very much have not much consideration for the United States government. Pass beyond the whole, you know, support the troops, thin blue line, yada, yada, whatever. But beyond that, like the, the de facto patriotism bullshit, uh, most people around here are not big fans. They're not. They're really not. It's here. There's a much more. There's a much uh, uh, deeper, more refined sense of uh, you know us as Alabamians, us as our own group and our own people. Yeah. So you already have that working in your favor, right? Whereas other places that might not be the case. Yeah, um, that seems to be. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but that that seems or to at be at least a, other countries anyway. Well, no, yeah, but no, but I was saying just within the bounds of the United States that it seems to be more prevalent in the southern states, like that, like the north, like a lot of the northern well, states. Well, no, no, know. Well, I'm just saying because like a lot of the northern states, they talk a good game, like New Yorkers. You know, they all, you know, every, you know, idiots from my damn state, all, you know, oh, we're New Yorkers, we're great, but they they kowtow to the federal government like no, like no, like nothing. You know, it's not even well, a question. Yeah, they're people basically to get in and do and do what. They have to get in, and you and you have to have a populace that's willing to repeatedly put in someone that in office is going to enact. Oh, well, yeah, but I wasn't even talking about the. I wasn't even talking about the the politicians. I was just talking about the people. So it's in like general. go ahead and kill me. Uh, <laughs> the guy that they're going to elect after me is going to do the same stuff. Like that's the level of of change that has to happen. Um, there's a great article written by Hans Hermann Hopp called "What Must Be Done," and he outlines a strategy on how to do basically anarcho capitalism. And most people won't read it, but it's really short, um, and it's super insightful. It, it basically gives the vision on how to get there. And you know, if you want to know my vision of activism right now, uh, I, I think shooting for winning your your city council, winning your mayor, uh, because the mayor is the one who hires the police chief. <laughs> so. Once that happens, it's kind of once you can fire the police chief and hire whoever you want as police chief, the laws are getting yeah. enforced at your whim. Yeah, that's that's actually a, a huge. I mean, if you if you want to pursue politics, if you don't believe I me, don't, that, 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 the 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 liberal Democrat mayor of South Carolina is the one who told the cops to stand down during all of that Charlottesville crap. Yeah, I, I don't I don't recommend it because honestly, there are literally countless other ways you could better spend your time. You could probably masturbate and have more success and more fulfillment than actually being involved um, in politics. But if you if you have your heart set on that, if that's something that really appeals to you, mayoral office, local offices, city offices. Maybe mm-hmm. county boards, uh, that, that's about as high as I'd go because once you get past that, it really starts to become detached and it becomes more of a political game. It becomes a shell game. It's no longer, you no longer have really any kind of direct you impact. You have to do massive, it. those those seats, and they're so protective that you have to take massive compromises to obtain them. And that's kind of the the reason why it's it, it falls apart after that localized Effort, yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah, but uh, you know, Adam Kokesh has this beautiful dream of like becoming president and shutting the government not, down, and then it just oh, boom, 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 like sake. a he doesn't have like he, a house of cards. He doesn't have a dream. He of doesn't that. realize that the that's that's not Adam. The dreams. bottom level is uh, Adam's doing this well. The bottom level for, for publicity. He has no intention. Well, He's Occam's Razor, right? He's wanting to uh, dissolve the entire federal government. That's going to happen when there's not enough cities to pay income taxes to the states and the states no, can't yeah, pay their taxes I, to see, the federal I, government. I, I, I've, I've, I've never disagreed with that point. I like that. I think I, I've always thought that that, that, that is, cause that's, you know, you look at the, the history again, I, I'm, I'm big on looking at the history of things. You just look at the history around the world, the, the giant nation states, the ones that had the little satellite countries and stuff underneath them. When did they finally lose power? When, yeah, when the, when the, those small sections took the power back for themselves. Unfortunately, it usually ends badly anyway, because either the big power is like, yeah, you can't do that. And they literally come in with the military and swat them the fuck down or the person who takes over actually ends up being just as bad or worse as the as the as the monolithic power they just left. 
Um, well, but, but when it comes, we but, all have, we're well, all trying on. to protect the most amount I know, of property. But, but when you That's come, the goals. When you come, the 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 two problems I have with the extreme localized approach. I don't disagree that if enough of them do it, then there's absolutely nothing the federal government could do. I don't disagree with that at all. In fact, I wish it would happen because that is the quickest way to make this all go away. That's but, what I'm doing. But it. It has to happen on a large enough scale because, unfortunately, again, you can just look at the history of the United States. You know, you talk about taking over a town and then firing the police chief and then trying to set up an anarcho capitalist community within the bounds of the United States and whatever state you're in on top of that. Because, again, it also depends on what the look where you are when you're trying to pull this off, because you may get a neighborhood of you may get a neighborhood of people. You may get a small town of people that agree to go along with you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because of the reality of where we live and the history of this particular government and how they will just openly murder a whole fuck ton of people oh, and look, be able to spin no it doubt. like you were the crazy terrorist and that will that will actually you know to 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 purposely try to create the chilling effect that it does not happen again you can guarantee that the 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 weight well, it doesn't of the mean USA it doesn't have to be tried. Uh, the, the I'm thing not, again, is, I'm not, it's a, but, but what? But a to Andre's point, city but to be, Andre's point before about happening. not trying this because see, there's so many other things you could do. Yeah, the threat of that. <laughs> Like again, yeah, and that's and that's another thing that I want to point I th- out. I because think their session is kind of when hang you, on a second. when they start worrying. Hang, hang on a second, Dave. Hang on. Let me let me finish my thought, and we'll talk about secession because that I'm I'm really keen on that too because that's I think the the best way forward. Um, but something that I want to point out because there's I I mean I literally just had a conversation about this with some whoever on Facebook about this bullshit again again once again. Um, the things that you decide to engage in, what, whatever method you decide to, to go through, whether it's agorism, you know, uh, or just, you know, avoiding the state as much as possible, but staying within the bounds of the law, you know, and not, not actively competing, just trying to avoid it and, you know, taking whatever steps you can or getting involved with various political action groups or, you know, various private organizations to try and affect some sort of change some way. All of these things are going to be the individual's choice. And so every individual is going to have to make a cost benefit analysis uh, with regards to the risk involved. So, for example, you know, I've had conversations with people who are like, oh, well, I haven't paid taxes in 24 years. I don't know what you're talking about. Anybody who pays taxes is a slave. Well, no, that, that's that's not true. Uh, if you willingly if you if you claim that you're volunteering to pay taxes and you want them to take money. Yeah, you can make the argument that they're slaves. Um, if you're doing it because you don't want the IRS to come after you and your property and seize your shit at the barrel of a gun, that's not, I mean, that, that, that's not willful slavery. Uh, it's not that pejorative term that they likes to be, that people like to bandy about when, you know, you don't reach their levels of purity, right? Um, everything comes down to a risk analysis that the individual has to take. Every one of us, you know, regardless of what kind of path we, we want to choose, we're the ones that make that risk analysis. Nobody's, no, nobody can make it for us. Nobody else is us. Nobody else has access to the information that we would have to use to make that decision. So don't be, don't, don't get yourself caught up in people saying, oh, you're not pure enough or, oh, you're unprincipled or yada, yada, whatever. It's one thing to, to just completely abandon the things you believe in and go after whatever. And it's another thing entirely to, not go full bore, you know, wandering nomad living on $400 a month because not all of us can do that. Like that's not a viable option for every single person who wants to ascribe to liberty. So I I just wanted to say my piece about that because that was on my mind recently today. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, va- very valid one. It's a very good point. Although, although I mean, fun. seriously, who who else is gonna who else is gonna uh, be able to make the risk analysis for you? Oh. No, you're absolutely some right. rando no on the web. No, no, absolutely not. I just I, I was. That's ch- why well, my standard goal has, our standard statement has always been attack at all angles. Find your angle and go with it. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you what to do. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, well, yeah, and again, I that's why you know I'm I'm fine with other people doing whatever they want. As I said earlier, I've I've loosened my stance on that. I'm not I'm not as rigid about it anymore. I I, I totally understand that. There's certain things I won't particular I, I won't engage. You with. have a driver's license, um, you fucking sheep. I was just I was just kind of la- I I was chuckling a little bit though when you when you were t- when you're talking about that, Andre, especially when you hit the you know, it, not everybody can live on the you know four hundred dollars a month and run running around like that. And I was like I was just thinking of the last new podcast I listened to where they were they had you know they had actually interviewed a bunch of people and they're starting to interview a bunch of people like apparently that are actually doing this right now and uh, they played clips from this one video of people that are you know they don't call themselves Vanuans but they're basically been living this lifestyle and this one guy was describing basically that is like people don't realize it you really you know it's amazing what you could do with this amount of money <laughs> So, I mean, it is probably possible, but yeah, the level of comfort. Oh yeah, no, totally. Le- le- and believe me, I, God, I wish I could. I wish I had that, yeah, that ability, but, but the level of comfort, I have other obligations. Well, yeah. Well, you know, we have, you and I have kids, you know, other, you yeah. know, other people have other things in their lives and, and, and just the level of comfort most of us have gotten used to. Yeah. There's certain things that most of us, if we don't have to, don't really want to have to give up, you know? <laughs> so we may, we, we'd be willing to shell out a little extra money for these things rather than trying to scrimp and save, you know, like other, like again. That's, so what you're saying is you support the state. Absolutely. Yes, you absolutely. You caught me. So what you're <laughs> saying is you want all people. To die. Kathy. <laughs> yes, Kathy. You're absolutely so- <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so you made me uh, see the error of my ways, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So get, getting back, getting back to the subject. Yeah, I mean, there there are you know, there's a bunch of different things you could do, and you're right, Andre. It, it obviously does. There there is a level of risk, especially if if you're doing anything to cross the state in any way, shape, or form. There's always a level of yeah. Risk. Any any sort of counter counter activity. That's that's something you need to take a long hard think about because that exposes you. To an enormous amount of risk. Now, granted, there's plenty of people that can go their entire lives doing it and never get looked at twice, but there always exists the possibility that it's going to be you that one time. Let it never be said that there's any law so insignificant that the government won't send somebody with a gun to enforce it. Yeah, this is true. Well, just know you can always print out, you know, when, when it come election time, right? You can save up a little bit of money. And go get some black and yellow taxation is theft like political, you know, yard signs, and just oh, drive taxation around is town theft is so blase. That's so two thousand and two. Whatever, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I yeah. know. I'm just poking fun, man. You but, hater. Well, I mean, we 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 were talking about like the, I mean <laughs> the localization of things. <laughs> Uh, and I, I before you know before on before Andre said his piece, which again it was very was very important, and people should take that in consideration because I know if, at some of these conversations, Dave and I start to go back and forth with each other. We're basically falling into that trap by saying, "No, no, you do it this way." It's like, no, that's not how it works. Uh, there are different ways to go about this, but you know, because you had, you had also mentioned the the secession thing, which I still have my issue. I mean, I used to be a huge proponent of it. I mean, heck, I I have I have the Facebook page. My church is named after that's the Church of the Immac- Immaculate Secession, but I've you know, because of the because of the political game that has to be played involved in it too, it's just also something I will not. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to be involved in. I mean, if it happens successfully, I'm not going to you know poo poo it. Obviously, great. Uh, but you know, talking about the whole localization thing, like we were, you know, the 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 threat of you being taken out, <laughs> literally, by me, not even necessarily the federal government, depending on where you are, it might be the state government you're in if you try to, because you, what you're actually doing in that sense is then you're going to essentially try to secede from that state in order to actually have a functioning anarcho-capitalist society. Well, you all know, right, see, that's where you're drawing the conclusion wrong on, on what we're saying here. What we're saying is, is you just have a private city, it's still capitulating to, to county, it's still capitulating to uh, state and federal, but it, it's removing that layer of city government, so and there's really nothing they can though. do about that. <laughs> no, you have. Like I was trying to break down earlier. Well, the no, because the people you realize is, the people you realize the people like again. I don't know how far you've stepped out of looking at governments beyond beyond your own local one. Because most of the ones across the country, the people who run those local governments are just as, if not more, corrupt than the people who run on the levels above them. And most of oh, them, no, most no of them, no, most of them, end, the argument. most of them end up in. Well, no, that because you you want to be able to you need to be able to take down this structure by doing it by their rules in order to do that. That's what you're describing. 
again, the the roadblocks of reality yeah, come into can, play because they're not going to let that happen. And what? And once once well, the next level, they can do about well, it. I, yes, you, there is. <laughs> again, if you win, if you win the votes, there's nothing they can do about it. Oh, Dave! Again, this 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 just shows your ignorance of history of, on any level. The, the votes don't matter. You can't say you can't say on one level that the votes don't matter, and then say well, the the votes. There's nothing they can do. No, Jeremy, it's always <laughs> about pushing the most non-aggressive thing forward, right? And if you can vote your way into peaceful secession, which I don't know why we can't. That that's kind of ne what needs to happen. Look, look what the Keebler elf went out there and said. Going to happen in this. Look what the Keebler elf went out there. I think he, I think that was today. That quote came out. The newest quote from him. Who? The Keebler that's elf. That's the Honorable Jeff Sessions. Jeffy Sessions. To you, sir. Um, uh, none of these things. That, no, according to the federal government, none of these things. Secession, nullification. None of this shit exists. This has all been settled science, motherfucker. <laughs> why you can't? You, well, you asked why we can't do it. Have a vote for it. That's why you can't have a vote for it. That's but that was decided no, no, no. a long we're, time ago. Not that doesn't openly, happen. <laughs> well, you're, no. you're thinking of open intentions. This isn't no, <laughs> no. You, what you, you have the whole intention of like if you if you read what must be done, it's I first again. Steps. I have. We've been through this. It's okay. Well, maybe of, the audience hasn't. I know. And I'll the, put the, it the plan the show, is <laughs> to go in and um, vote in. Uh, as many local offices as you can, uh, then start holding, um, you know, votes in the city to ban government vote, uh, uh, workers and non uh, property owners and non -pro uh, city, you know, property tax pay payers suspend their city voting rights. That way, you only have property owners voting. And then they can vote for uh, the privatization of the city into sellable shares. And then you just essentially have a private corporation running uh, all of the city's uh, functions. Now, whether that city, that, that private corporation capitulates to the counties or the states or above's demands is another thing. But I, I, I have no clue. But I, I know that that is a step towards anarcho-capitalism. Uh a theoretical so, step, but again, as soon as as soon as you mentioned voting and the way you described it, the federal government swoops in and applies the voting the Voting Rights Act um, because they've been able to twist that however they possibly uh, can. Multiple counties have banned uh, uh, government workers from from voting in their things. Like all of it is easily obtainable; it just has to be done. <laughs> Actually, the, yeah, I was going to say the Voting Rights Act wouldn't protect uh, government workers because it's not a protected class under the Voting Rights Act. There's no way. There's there's they've no. Used it, actual they've actually way to they've, they've used they've used they, they've used things to protect government workers plenty of times before. I don't they, I don't I don't put it past them to do it again. <laughs> well, I mean, well, after depend, you are we talking about federal recipients. workers or are we talking about city workers? Well, again, because again, you have to get like you if you in order to get to yeah, the city, you have city to workers. you have to get past. You not only have to get past the federal government, but you have to get past the state, and that's why I said it. This is com this is beyond completely location dependent. I just I don't see it being well, think feasible. Think about what here. happens when you have. Think about what happens when you don't have the right to vote, right? You don't care what happens, right? So it's like, well, it's going to happen whether I want it or not. Well, if you're a city employee and your right to vote is restricted on city affairs because of your employment status, uh, it would be the same feeling. You wouldn't care. You would just have hopes and dreams of the voting outcomes. So it... We're all playing Occam's Razor here. We know it has failed in the past. We know blah blah blah. We, well, we no, that's it. why we well, all know that. Well, I was trying to get. I was trying to lead it back into the secession talk because, again, while I am more, uh, well, I, that's I, a critical I'm, mass thing. Well, right? yeah, but when you have a whole state that's like, no, nah, we're done, like Texas. Well, what no, but what not can even, they honestly do if Texas is like, we're done, we're well, out? Well, again, it's it's it, it, it would be location dependent, but. Uh, I do think that would stand a better chance of not being taken out almost immediately versus the hyper localization one. Because again, the, the smaller the group you are, on one hand, you may be able to stay hidden no, longer. No, we're talking about uberly blending in, just having a private city. That's the key, man. Okay, it's Dave, a private city. Dave, 
Okay, but I already addressed that before when I pointed out the how how the structures are built right now, which means the level just above the one that you think you just took over will immediately know that things have changed and will immediately know that things are different and they will immediately be Correct. able to put it up the up the line to the state government and be like, "Hey, we have an issue down here." If you are successfully right. able to take and, over and an entire state, to, then you have a much better chance the of the mayor what what is what does that say for democracy? Again, if they again the mayor this, but that's for what implementing I'm, the demo, the what the the what the people who voted them in to do. You know what I'm saying? Like they're Dave, only Dave. pissing their times? citizens off. No, no, they're not really. They, you think they would be, but how many times has again just the U.S. government itself been able to successfully convince people? I mean, granted, it's happened all over the fucking world, but that. It's okay to interfere in democracy if we say it's okay to interfere in the democracy because they're not doing it quite right. So when the federal government ca gets involved, or even a state government to a certain extent, it takes it, it is is looking at this small group, it, which is very easily easy to demonize, especially in this day and age, and make them be these horrible terrorists of some extort who are who are planning this hor you know planning this horrible thing. I th the public I think, sentiment I mean, can be turned against you quickly. Consideration is necessary. I just don't think it should be the immediate jump. Is all. Well, no, I, I'm just I, saying I just th there's more of a threat of that when you're a smaller group. I mean, the people in Ruby Ridge and Waco, I, I think, would uh, would tell you the same, at least the ones who actually survived. You know, <laughs> when the the smaller the group you are, the, 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 the easier it is for them to demonize you. And do I just that think it's you. super hard to propagandize people into war these days. Yeah, like, like you, you I, just I, notice, I, like, I, I hope people so, are talking, but, like, about California. You, th you think people talk about California seceding right now, but they're not even mad. But like, there's no way California gets to secede peacefully, right? There's like X billion amount of secret military bases and open military bases in California. You know, there's so many ports that the you know at least the military relies on. You know, so there's no way. Like, there's no way it would they would kill off whoever tried to secede. So like. You're right. In some some scenarios, there's it's, it, this is hyper local, local location dependent on where you're trying to do this. Yeah. Because if you if you're taking a global asset, which California is a global asset, you know, eighty percent of all America's uh, food comes from there. Uh, the 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 vegetables come from there. So uh, that's kind of ridiculous. You know, California secedes and they have a, a eighty percent grip on you know. A, their see i don't host nations food 80 percent of the mexicans I don't, in the united I don't, states also come from california <laughs> so i want to put that out there I, I i i don't know about that man a lot of them live in texas now i don't <laughs> texas has stopped caring to a certain extent uh they don't uh whatchamacallit it's uh i i don't think there really ever was a threat of california going anywhere i mean because the northern half of california has been trying to leave the southern half for decades now well, and but they haven't even been able to pull that, that off, and that, that's not even and that's not even taking the main part of California away from the federal government. <laughs> that's just taking that that they were because those people, the 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 Jefferson, the state of Jefferson movement. Like I was involved with them for a little while, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, I I was trying to, you know. I was just trying to see where they were, what they were up to and stuff. So many of them were like so willing to immediately capitulate to the, not just because they had to, they were happy about it, about capitulating to the federal government about a bunch of things. Cause they just wanted that. They just wanted to be separate from, from, uh, from the, from the idiots down in, 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 in Southern California. You know, that's the, that, that was their yeah, attitude. And it's still a farce. You're still being robbed to pay for all those liberals down in the, you know, you know, Santa Monica and San Francisco and all that. So, like, what's the point? Like, even if you are, like, even us, you know, me and Andre in Alabama and you in New York, we're still paying for abortions in California through federal taxation. So it's like a joke. It's all a joke. Like, a secession is really the only answer, but it's got to be a certain well, based on the rhetoric. nexus of people doing it. It's got to be like boom, boom. Like, it can't be a couple of people want to secede. Yeah, 
Well, it's, it's, and that's, and that's the problem we run into because even, even with some of these ideas that, that, you know, work, work well on paper or sure, well, even, or even should work, have- even should work according to the stupid, the idiotic laws that are around, like it st- should still be perfectly fine to do so, you know, and there shouldn't be yeah. an issue, but the way it, everything's been twisted, it's like, well, you know, it doesn't matter if you can, if you can work it out logistically, you're not actually going to be it's- allowed to do it. <laughs> Uh, but explain to me why people can't see this contradiction that we're going to have to have smaller and smaller and smaller states that that libertarians are going to have to advocate for smaller states, and that's going to be a status position. Like I don't understand why that makes that bad. Like why is that immoral or bad? Like I, I just, hear it from it's some a, it's libertarians' only, it's mouths only that makes you the biggest status in the world to want a no, smaller it's, state. It's only, it's, like, it's only bad insofar as if that's your end point, if that's your end goal, then yeah, okay. I mean, you haven't really accomplished much. But ultimately, I I agree. Like The way forward is more states, not less states. Because up until the point that there are no states at all, you don't want to move the needle towards larger, more monolithic governments the, the never ends well for anybody no you want more controllable like uh, well no it's not even hey not i even, know where that guy's even sleeps, necessarily more controllable you know? well i mean part of that too but the smaller the state the less that they can do on their own and the more they have to compete with all the other ones right yeah well because I mean, the, yeah, the secession the, okay, angle, the, the, right? If you yeah, could the, pack up and go to Georgia, right? If you don't like the laws in Alabama, you kind of still are. It's, it's you're still in America. You still have these overarching laws that it doesn't really feel different, right? Well, not only that, but with like the model penal code and the way that uh, law school bar exams or bar exams are administered, there's a lot of places where the uh, testing and the subject matter is uniform, right? So it doesn't even matter, even at a local level. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I you're it, at this point right now here in the United States, you're not going to experience that, even though you can go to another state. But if they were actually different states, uh, I mean, granted, wherever you're going to go, you're going to get taxed, but it's going to be a of different situation wherever you go because now instead of it being one large, you know, supranational organization that has control of the entire territory, now it's fifty separate ones. And some may well, be harder to get into than others, you know, so on that. that. Well, that, 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 that was supposed to be how things worked, <laughs> according, according, according to the history. Uh, you know. Well, okay, you know what? And just, just as an aside, I want to say this. Um, I admire the Constitution. I think they gave it a very solid try. I don't think they, they succeeded. In fact, I think they, they laid the groundwork for their own demise. But I do appreciate the effort they put forth to try and make it at least work the way that so, the, a lot of the people that yeah. were ratifying it wanted it to work. I appreciate some, I, okay. I appreciate some of their efforts. Not a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, really and truly. I mean, if you look at the structure of it, you have three, you have three separate but quote-unquote co-equal branches of government, all of which are elected by various organiza- various parts and pieces. It's just communism. It's not, it's not just communism, dude. It not is. everything is communism. Thank you. Not yes, is. everything is communism. Yes, and there's the show picture right, for this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why it Dave's is. meme is going on there. Go I ahead, Dave. explain to you why it Go is. Go ahead, Dave. Beca- because the, uh, political authority is in the commons. It's up to a vote. It's not, no one owns it. So it is communism. No, that's not communism. So, that is not communism. Public that is literally not communism. Yes, the means of production in the Constitution are not touched upon at all. They are not even addressed. This is true. So government... Political power is not the is means not a, of production. Not a market force? Not a market force. <sighs> Dave, political power is not the means of production. Yeah. Or rather, I should say, they are not the sole means of production. If you control political power, no you do no, not, no, no. by fact, control the means of production. This is not the case. This is correct. The two well, are no, not what equivalent. What I'm saying is, is the public owns... No. That political authority, Do yeah, you know that's irrelevant here? to communism. The public though. doesn't own it. No, that's what is co- that's what communism is. It's no, well, communism. Not. No, com- No, it is no, no. The but the okay, mm, hold on communism. Let me pull up no, the no. old dictionary oh, here Jesus. that I look at okay. every day and have to link people. All right, cool. 
Let's oh, let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. I'll do it myself as well. Oh my god. Okay. I don't want to get boxed. See, this is what this is how we started earlier. No, let's not we do not we okay. Political I've, theory derived I've, from Karl Marx advocating class war and leading to a society in which all property is publicly owned and each person works and is paid according to their abilities and needs. Wah wah wah. Okay. Where Socialist. in the constitution does it say all property is publicly owned? Show me where. Uh, Show me where the president Show me is where. a elected position. Article one, okay. section eight. <laughs> no, they can tax everything. <laughs> AK means they own it. <laughs> if you if you don't pay your taxes, they'll come take it. That's literally you're paying rent. Uh, social system based on collective yes, ownership. Okay, no. that's what communism oh. is. That's no communism from is the French very communism. Okay, we're not doing this. I am, I am, I am, right, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm not about doing to get. This. I'm, I'm about to get this. all authoritarian I'm, I'm on your ass. Okay, I'm conceding. I, I'm not doing this. There's a, I'm not there, doing there's a new decree. We are, we we will never again devolve into Dave's def definition. Very rants. smart. Not happening anymore. You're still wrong. You are wrong. You're outvoted on top of everything else. That's democracy. Democracy for you, bitch. Anyway, moving on, Dave. But anyway, going, moving on, stepping aside. Yes. Not everything is communism. You were saying, Andre. <laughs> it is. Before though. we got into I don't even know what I was saying. You, well, anyway, you, you were trying. I'm just. You, let's just move on. You I'm were talking giving, about I'm the Constitution. Why you? Why you? Why you thought it was a, a valiant effort? And I thought. It, I think it was a valiant effort. Honestly, it, really and truly, if you're talking about uh, 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 systems of authority and governance, right? Uh, very rarely do you have. I mean, even in the British system, which is where uh, we draw a lot of our law from and a lot of our legal forms and common law. Um, you had parliament, which served both as the legislature and the courts, right? So, I mean, there wasn't this separation between all functions of government, the three primary functions, right? The writing of the law, the adjudication of the law, and the execution of the law. That's essentially what systems of government are, governance are. You have a method of identifying the law, which is adjudication, right? It's uh, determining which law is supreme. You have a, a system for changing the law, and you have a system for executing the law and enforcing it. Um, every single, like all of the three branches are composed of people that are selected for those positions in different ways according to each branch by different groups of people. So it's not, it's so it, 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 there was a conscious effort to like try and break up political monopoly of power, right? I mean, I, at the end of the day, yeah. I, I think the ambiguous language and, and many well, yeah. failures of the Constitution is ultimately what led to its demise, but I think it was a solid effort. Well, and I, I, will, I, will it, even, uh, I will even I will even postulate further and say that at the time that it was adopted and at the time that these debates were going on, the understanding was such that even the framers, even Alexander Hamilton, even Alexander Hamilton, whom I have nothing but loathsome emotion for would be rolling over in his grave seeing what's happened now like he, he would even think that this has gone far probably beyond probably not anything i see, disagree I, dave I, we're just gonna agree to disagree i, I see sadly i'm actually be with dave on that one i think o only what's because, happening now is all part of the plan well no see i, I no i think I, I i agree i agree it's part of the plan i uh, but uh i think that it was a plan that was put in place by certain people not the vast majority right well yeah and again I, I don't think i don't think that the, the i don't think the majority of the hear, framers of the signers and dignitaries that I, the signatories of the the constitution who ratified it at the state conventions i don't think that there's no they wouldn't have supported any of this well see uh, in well, fact they explicitly we, said that they wouldn't well on so that, on that I, point I really alone, don't think on that point alone you you actually if you know you if you actually want to dig into the history of this stuff because most and most people haven't but the one of the few um ratifying convention that there's still a lot of documentation on that you can actually read you know you can actually get uh, obtain pretty easily and read is the uh, Virginia ratifying uh, convention. And that's one of the yeah. ones I always used to the point Virginia to because one. that one, you can actually see how they, how most of the people that were the ones who had to agree to let these delegates go make the decisions for them were, were snowed completely because they had all these concerns. A lot of them ended up being like of, of the anti-federalist variety because they were the ones oh, they were screaming creased. the whole time going this shit like you if base i mean they weren't using this language but if if you allow this to happen this is what's going like this, this shit's going to go down 
Like, this powertrain is going to be fucking insane. You just watch. Like, this is what they're setting you up for. And at the Virginia Rattler, yeah, and like, like what, 80 years later? They boom. came, they came, in, they came and war. bullshitted them up a storm and promised them none of this stuff is going to happen. And sure enough, as soon as they got up there and started fucking hammering everything out, everything went out the fucking window. And uh, and they and they ended up totally snowing them and doing this entire fucking and, and doing this job because the people who were actually at the constitutional convention was a much smaller group. And, you know, a decent number of them really did have uh, aim at, at not just freedom for everybody. They wanted freedom and power for themselves. Hamilton being one of them, yeah. you know, Madison's another one. Madison wanted fucking centralized power. There's he fucking got it. There's well, two yeah, things. Okay. There's, 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 there's a difference between centralized power as compared to the articles of confederation and centralized power as to what we have now i don't think either of them would have thought that wickard v philburn was a tenable judicial decision break that I don't down think for any, the i don't think layman okay, okay so wickard v philburn was the uh, supreme court decision in the 30s whereby the interstate commerce clause was read to also mean that the federal government could regulate what you do within the state, even if like the the specific facts of the case were, um, the wheat farmer, right? A farmer was growing uh, wheat, right, on his own property for his own consumption, and it was never going to enter the stream of commerce. And this was during the time when they had uh, uh, quotas for farmers for production, so such that they could uh, control the price of wheat, right? Uh, back when they were telling you know farmers that were too productive to just throw their shit away and subsidizing farmers that weren't productive enough. Right. Um, and so mm -hmm. the federal government actually came in and said, no, 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 it doesn't matter if you grow it on your own land, because this is a federal program, this is interfering with interstate commerce and you and everybody like you who is not engaging in the market with your wheat and not buying wheat to offset your need because you grow your own that impacts interstate commerce and thus falls within the commerce clause i don't think madison That's or because hamilton socialists have to control the they have to control the entire market yes they, have to, they, they want to I, centrally plant yes dave i got it it's that that was not the original intention of the constitution okay um well, that being said i, I don't I think, think madison or hamilton would have read the interstate commerce clause in that fashion I mean, you're no, welcome there's to no way. We can, have a, we can have a debate over this, but I don't think either yeah, of no. them would have. Ma maybe Madison. Of the use of. <laughs> well, I don't even think him. I really no, no, don't. I, I get what you're saying, Andre. No, I, I, I and you know what? It, it's hard to say. I mean, unfortunately, with with Madison, he was kind of schizophrenic. He went back and forth on a lot of things because he wanted that power. And then. Yes, he was and, a troubling and, guy. And, huh? and, then, and then he and then around 1800, he was in, you know, he was totally in line with Jefferson about the whole, you know, because the resolution, this Kentucky and uh, Virginia resolu resolutions of uh, 1798. Patrick Henry is, in my opinion, the best. Um, you know, and then his report thing. of 1800, where he yes. was basically chastising a lot of the bad things that had happened already, you know, all this stuff. Um, but then later on, he basically if everyone said, would have just fucking listened to Patrick Henry. No, well, yeah, <gasps> things might have been a lot better if people were listening to him instead of the rest of these knuckleheads. Um, but I do get I do get what you're saying. You know, I mean, who, who the hell knows? Either way, this is what we have to deal with now. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, how, how like, do we how this do, is a rhetorical <laughs> exercise? Yeah. So this, how, yeah, how, yeah. how do we work? How do we work around it? I mean, we've already tried to cover the localization and the secession things. You know, no, I mean, honestly, van nomadism. You can always buy yourself a van and go drive around. Yeah, I mean, again, if if that, you're an individual, Vanu, man, Vanu, it's well, the whole Vanu ma thing. Mainly, it, it's getting your house in order. That's the main thing. Getting yourself in order, being self reliant, being self sustaining. Right. Yeah. Forget the, the world. Forget do. the government. Forget those states that are intruding on you and aggressing upon you. There's yeah, always going to be someone aggressing upon you. So. If not, you're going to be paying people for them not to. So either way, you're going to be getting taxed. So <laughs> don't don't think about what's happening to you in the, the the ways that you can't change anything. Think about what you can change. Think about you can put signs around your your entire city as a troll. Seriously, I my entire city's got Jesus is Lord everywhere on signs. Okay. So if they can do that, then we can put taxation as theft or vacate the state or whatever everywhere. Well, yeah, okay. You can start, so try to start if you want this. simple stuff to do, all you need is a couple of spray cans of paint, wow. a stencil, and some some cheap wire and boards. I mean, it's so easy. Only on government so, property, though. Don't do that to private property. Yeah, make them clean it up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
Um, well, yeah, but well, I please, think there's please, two. There's, there's, there's places two. you get arrested for for using chalk, man. So let's not let, let's let you, you got to be careful. Again, you have to be careful what we encourage here. And obviously, as as Andre pointed out so so uh, so well earlier, you know, everything. <laughs> there's a risk a risk assessment involved in all of this. Yes. Obviously, do not take you know the words of especially Dave. Don't don't take those. Take that with a bucket of salt. Oh, you, if uh, look, if there is a big issue, but no, you, if there's a big issue and you get any qualms from from your city from putting up signs or anything around your, your neighborhoods or anything um call me put in super no 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 put in super 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 <laughs> fine print in there yard sale at blah 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 whatever well, <laughs> and just put, that way they're like it's just the yard sale sign I go, going to place. going to the going to the the point about self-reliance ultimately on an individual level the best thing that you can do like uh, jeremy was saying is be an example for others right uh, to you know reduce the amount that you rely on the apparatuses of the state like so for example don't have credit cards try to avoid credit cards as much as possible that's sound financial advice and it keeps you out of the realm of every government agency that deals with the credit card companies and and credit by banks in general right that's that's good advice i don't care who you are so if you can do that that's a step in the right direction yes right very good one <laughs> Don't whatever you do, don't get one of those like license plates that says free citizen. That's a surefire way to get pulled over and arrested. Please, oh, God, yeah, don't do yeah, that. You have to be pragmatic in your, your approaches, right? Well, and you got to think as well in a private so society, everyone would have a tag on their vehicle. Everyone would have to have licenses well, to be on Well, no, but I'm talking about road. specifically don't, about the, the private yeah, citizen, no registration. Well, yeah. yeah. Don't, please don't. And, and I actually yeah, don't I do that. I think I did. I, I was providing. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I, I think I. I think I recommended uh, in that in that message I sent back to our listener who we started this conversation <laughs> trying to answer her questions uh, as as something you know uh, ben, uh, Ben's book uh, uh, Ben Stone's book because it talks about that type of stuff if you if you want to engage in any type of thing whether it's whether you want to go the political route or whether you want to do all these other things if you're going to be out there even if you're just going to be talking and you're going to make yourself a target of some sort then yeah you absolutely you know if you're going to be driving around make in a yourself vehicle, as small a target as yeah, possible make it as clean as possible you know you know this does tie into what you guys had meant you know i think dave you were mentioned earlier about the whole you know thing people coming down and you have to use you know different things if you have your driver's license or whatever it's like well yeah would i rather not deal with these things absolutely a but Philly club is if you much be, less preferable <laughs> if you want if you want to yeah if you want to be as inconspicuous as possible and also you know just in case you do make yourself a target um, you need to be as clean as possible. So they have to work really, really hard to actually have something on you. You know, if you're somebody who just absentmindedly drives around and forgets about things like, you know, your registration expiring or whatever, or like you carry around, you know, drugs in your car regularly, you know, if you get pulled over, you really can't blame anybody but yourself. <laughs> For being in that also a big enough threat, you're gonna get black bag. Do I think so, do I think it's yeah, wrong that just, they do that to you? Absolutely. I would hate that it happened yeah, to me, but course, I also don't drive around with shit in my fucking car because I know also, that I have a target also, on my back. Aside with, uh, as an aside with that, as far as like the pol interaction with the police go, um, none of us like them. We're all really, really pissed that we have to deal with them. But when you do have to deal with them, nine times out of ten. Uh, being polite, courteous, and non uh, non aggressive is generally going to work out in your favor. Now, that's not going to work every time, and you may still end up getting your ass beat. You might just be having a shitty day. That's the nature of policing in the United States. But it it will work <laughs> in your favor if you if you try to be as less threatening as possible. Do you guys want me to talk about some white privilege I had the other day? <laughs> it depends. I'm not you whip sure. out your card and everything. Or <laughs> I whipped out my card and everything. I got pulled over in, like in Tennessee, so I was out of state. So I got pulled wait, over. Wait, wait, you actually left at the state. night. This, yeah, this is I, news I to me. <laughs> Anyways, I got pulled over. Right, the cop flashed his light twice. Right, it was raining. It was uh, uh, construction and going on and everything. It was real late at night, um, and uh, we get pulled over. And he's like, "Hey, uh, I, I flashed you twice. You need to slow down." Uh, you're going 12 over or whatever the I could get you for. Uh, you need to slow down. And I was like, man, I didn't know what you were flashing me for. I just thought that those lights were just automatically going so no one would hit you. You know, like <laughs> driving by. And he was like, oh. 
And I was like, yeah, man, I wasn't ignoring you or anything. I would have slowed down if I would have known that's what you meant. And he was like, I flashed you twice to slow you down. I was like, um, yeah, I would have slowed down. Like, I'm not trying to get pulled over <laughs> uh, in the middle of the night in Tennessee. Uh, and so he was like, well, you get home and be safe now, bud. <laughs> I was like, wow. uh, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, now yeah. You take I'm care not now. used to that at all. You broke, you broke I'm the not used to rule, that Dave. at all. Come on, Dave. Everybody knows you can go nine miles over the speed limit. Once you get over like 10, oh. 11, 12, you're in trouble. Man. I I didn't even know I was breaking the speed <laughs> limit. I didn't see a sign for while, miles. There was a it was a construction road. Like I was I was being dead serious on trying to keep my uh, cruise control at right at the speed limit because it was all construction. And I couldn't find, I told him, I said, I, I didn't see a sign. He was like, oh, the sign's back there. I was like, you're right. I, I guess I just forgot to see it. <laughs> just to see it. Yeah, there you go. I, you know, the worst thing you can do to, like you were saying, in my opinion, the worst thing you can do, it has to be within reason, right? If a cop's like threaten your life, like you have to respond. However yeah, you no, feel. of course, of course. I'm not going to say just like but, sit down, sit there and take it. But, but if you're getting pulled over, it behooves you because you're already in a worse position because they're armed and they have you basically in a they're going to be able to draw faster than you can oh yeah you know scenario so it you the best thing to do is just don't try to test their authority remember these guys work in a world where no one tests their authority nine times out of ten maybe even more of a percentage than that probably 9.9 .9 out of 10 so if you're that one little blip in the radar that's like what in the hell are you doing talking to me like that? it's just they're programmed to just squash the worst smash <laughs> you're and you're asking for it so it's like seeing a beehive and going man i bet that beehive isn't going to sting me and then going up and poking it and getting stung and then saying those racist beehives yes that would be my first thought anyway <laughs> racist bees <sighs> racist bees all right well i I'm, I'm glad you didn't end up in a cage over your uh, indiscretion dave so actually. it was i was we i laughed the whole way home <laughs> that's the best i was like i think damn some white privilege right there i think it Dave's might be white real. privilege story the I think might be Dave's real. white privilege story is about the best way we could end this episode yeah. i don't think we could top that the tonight. myth might be real i, I don't know I don't, I don't know. know. I'm I'm plenty white. I've I've gotten pulled over and gotten tickets plenty of times. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but when you're yelling "fuck you" to the cops, I've it's never little... <laughs> I've never yelled "fuck you" to the cops in any of my encounters with them. While well, yeah, my but uh, I yeah, did but say Jeremy, I when did you call them not in not in when English. It's knives. always in Italian, I, 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 right? I didn't it's always them, in Italian. Them with knives. <laughs> I wasn't menacing them with a knife when they arrived. The knife was oh, in the forgot oh, you're menacing. Oh, sure, Jeremy, the menacer. Oh, that's all on video too. Come on. They, they, that was on. That was on. That was on. That was I on saw you menacing on there. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. Uh, you look pretty menacing. Thanks for dude. I'm taking pretty my, menacing. My knife away from me, dude. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah. I just can't believe you didn't have a straight. Blade. I don't know That's if we actually answered it. any questions here. I don't know where we got very far. Uh, no, we did. We I, did. I we think, we addressed questions. We addressed concerns. I think we got off on some tangents. Yes. That's usually we how avoided, it goes here. We avoided kind of semantics debates. It happened. Yeah, we well, avoided, we tried. No, we didn't. Tried anyway. <laughs> Andre and I both. Uh, well, okay. To be to be fair, I think we did a pretty good job of not like going off the deep end on it. I think we only spent like a total of maybe five or six minutes doing it. So uh, out of like an hour and a half, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, it's, so, yeah, sadly, that's good for us. Anyway, all right. Well, I, I don't even know if I'm, I don't even think I'm going to ask if we have anything else at this point. I think we will just wrap up the show. Uh, yeah, sounds like a plan please, to me. Bro. I love Andre and Jeremy. That's all I have left. Uh, 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 thank you. Love Dave. you too, bro. You guys love are the best. So all right. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And please continue to send your questions and comments to us. Uh, actually, uh, well, I will say one other thing. I actually had a wonderful conversation last week, not with Dave, but with your brother, right? That was Jay. <laughs> Right, that I was. Oh talking, yeah, well, talking to last week, uh, who, who had a wonderful, I had yeah. a wonderful conversation with Dave's brother after the show last week, and he was actually giving us some suggestions uh, about things we could possibly do with the show, and uh, I guess I should throw it out here to everybody uh, instead of instead of putting it on like a, a post or something like that. But uh, he had brought up the possibility of us maybe trying to go live in some respect, uh, not video, because I all three of us are anti-video at this point. Danilo was the only one who ever insisted that we had to be on video back in the day, and uh, <laughs> as I tried to. Explain 
explain to a bunch well, of he's people. Got Speak for yourself. Hat, I'm photogenic you know? as shit. Well, see, no, see, this is what I tried to explain earlier because uh, Paul Gordon, our friend and our, our current webmaster, actually, uh, was trying to rub it mm-hmm. in earlier that uh, you know him and Lou <laughs> do a show, him and Lou Fiend do a show together on Thursday nights now, and they were going to be live and on video and stuff. And I, I tried to explain to him that you know we learned a long time ago that unless you unless you are the soul patch. Nobody gives a flying fuck about seeing you because, like, I, I'm. Per- I, I think I'm a. Per- I think I'm pretty as fuck, and nobody gives a shit, man. You know, <laughs> nobody cares. I mean, you I'm have not Danilo. You have you're only pretty when you're menacing people with knives. They, they, they care. They cared about Danilo, uh, and that was it. Unless you're Danilo, unless you're Danilo, Danilo with the soul patch, people don't really seem to care about video. They never really cared. You know, we we did much better when we switched to audio and got the quality. First, they it. came for the soul patch, and I didn't say anything because. So I didn't what, have what a soul was he patch. saying? Uh, having live. Well, no, he was being live, having well, yeah, he callers, was talking, and, and well, be, being able to interact with our our listeners, you know, whoever's able to listen when mm-hmm. we record, and uh, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, we normally record on Thursday nights, uh, so you know, it was a possibility. And like I said, I, I, I don't, none of us have an interest to in do in video, but I thought possibly we could try because we do have a Discord server already set up that we have used in the mm-hmm. past for certain guests who can't who you who have like Macs or something and can't use use Fiend phone, so they end up just uh. We use Discord mm-hmm. for that, so we could totally try. I mean, I, I li- I'd love to get some feedback from our listeners. Uh, you know, please let us know. Contact us through any of the channels that you know. I could set the Discord server up uh, very cleanly. Well, no, I know uh, we muted could, channels and stuff. We ha- the the way I figured we could do it is is the best thing we could do is we could set it up. If we if we tried that, we would set it up on Discord where people could come and they could text to us during the show. I wouldn't want to have it set up where anybody could just bust in at any time, only because and no offense, everybody. You have well, to have you, good. You, you have to have good audio. You have like a voice channel, well, no, and then yeah. have everyone muted except for the people you didn't want muted. Well, exactly. And then they no. could type I, in chat. I would only, I would only unmute the people that we actually that we actually have test that we have uh, verified ahead of time have good audio. Like if friends of ours who we've had yeah. on the show before, who we know, like if they pop by, because um, I know that used to happen in the past when uh, you guys used to do live shows. I know uh, Sterling used to pop in on your shows a lot. Um, so like if, mm-hmm. you know, if we have people like that that we already know are set up, then yeah, we can bring them on or. Even even if we have, you know, any of our listeners, if you actually have a good audio, uh, I'm perfectly willing to test it out with you before a show so we can confirm that you actually do. And then if you want to come in and talk, you know, I think we could totally try it. I mean, if you, guys, a, a, if you guys are up for it, we can. I can talk to you after the show, but Discord's pretty neat, man. We could have like approved uh, mic, you know, people like a, st- uh, you know, a rank in the, in the server that, you know, you just know these guys have good mics, a good equipment and everything. Well, no, I, I, yeah, obviously I'd, I'd have to go over all that with you, but yeah, that was kind of the idea. That was, that was one of the ideas he brought to me and I actually thought it was kind of an interesting one. I, I never really wanted to do it in the past, but with, with the ability to, um, interact, but not have people, cause that was always my thing with like not wanting to have actual callers or anything, you know, it's the same reason we never, we stopped doing callers. They stopped doing callers on the fiend, fiends a long time ago. Cause you know, you just get anybody who randomly calls you at any time. And if they you have, could de facto have, have a call in show with a discord, you could have a like a public channel that you run the show in that's muted right when people join in except for the people that are you unmute it's like auto mute channel like, like i said we'll talk about it after the show i, I don't want to i know people are yeah, like what the hell are these uh, guys talking yeah, about let's start to uh, like let's i said start I, getting wrapping up i thought this was uh I, I, that's just one of the ideas so i figured i'd throw that out there that so. would be cool yeah you know maybe if anything we'll try it you know we could test it out like once a month or do it every other week or something like that and see how it goes and you know also the possibility of if that goes well then if we start doing that then you know shifting the when we start doing interviews again just shift those to another platform or something but we'll see so Mm -hmm. all right yeah please uh let us know what do you guys think if that's uh something you'd be interested in us doing if anybody would uh be available and, and want to come hang out and listen to us live and uh you know obviously you'd also get a, you know first crack at listening to it because you know we record it on thursdays and it doesn't come doesn't come out till sunday or monday so you know yeah you get to hear everything first so it'd be like a vip thing yeah pretty much uh, and you wouldn't even have to give us we could charge a money. dollar to get onto the discord server i'm kidding <laughs> you, yeah you wouldn't even have to give us patreon money it'd be nice if you did but you wouldn't even have to all right. Anyway, so once th- those are just some ideas, please let us know what you think. And if you have any other suggestions uh, for different things, I know I've we asked for that before. We got some suggestions on guests. I have tr- been trying to work on those people. It's just been I've been having difficulty setting up uh, times when you know people are actually available to record with us. So uh, hopefully we can get that sorted out soon. But please uh, continue to send us our, our question, your questions, comments, and suggestions. We do appreciate it, and uh, all of our content as always, can be found at solpodcast.org. 
Patreon is still up and running. Uh, I do uh, do every do owe our patrons another episode that'll be out probably tomorrow, um, but that'll give us two this week, so we'll be back on track again. And uh, thank you, everybody. I think we actually I just saw we got uh, I think uh, I think a, a friend of mine from uh, a listener from a couple of the other shows that I'm on actually just became a new patron. I, I think Lane Raper. I saw his awesome. name pop up uh, with a donation. So thank you for your All service. All right, I appreciate cool beans it. and. Uh, Everybody, we're else. gonna get there. Everybody we just else, need a million people donate. to give a dollar a month. Well, like I guess uh, we do have a new goal on the Patreon. <laughs> if we get to a hundred, we'll start pu- we'll start pumping out two shows a week. And I did say that there's a good chance that one of those would be live anyway, or at least you know do a, I might be might be doing a live stream. Um, I, I'll start it, recording a show live. to put. A, I'll start recording like a, a thirty minute show to put on Patreon if. If if we meet that goal, well, yeah, if, if we, we get meet a, the hundred, if we get hundred, we need an extra show a week. Goal. At the very at the very least, we need an extra show a week. As I said, we'd put out two a week if we yeah. got to a hundred. So yeah, that'd there, be fun. There we go. All right, but I anyway. have musings. I sometimes I just want to sit down and yell at a mic, and I just I I haven't thought about doing it yet. Well, you should get on that, Dave. Uh, but make sure to check your beard before you record. Anyway, so once again, th- <laughs> thank you everybody for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Sudan. Peace in Yemen, for God fucking sake. That'll happen when that gets fucking glass sheeted. This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I'm raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.